Hey there, it's Erica from Ever Educating, and I do videos about teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for college instructors. This is going to be actually a, a series because I've just gotten access to Canvas as part of where I'm adjuncting currently. Um, before, I had access to Sakai LMS, and I have a video tutorial about that that I'll link below. But I know Canvas is a lot more popular, so I wanted to have basically a series of short videos about how I use it to curate my class website for my students. And so if you're new to Canvas, you know, as well, you might find these videos helpful. If you do, go ahead and click like and subscribe. All right. This is the second video in my Canvas tutorial series. So if you want to see the full series, you'll find a link of that in the description box below. Today is all about discussions. Uh, we've already covered pages. And so in this case, I'm already on the discussion page on my LMS. And a few things have already been created, but I'll show you how I do that. So from the very beginning, you want to go here to the little icon and you want to go through your settings. Do you want it so that you had to manually mark post as read um, or not? Uh, student settings, do you want them to be able to create discussion topics? Can they edit and delete their own post? And can they attach files to discussions? It's up to you to decide which ones you want to use there. And also you can save the settings as you'd like. Okay. Um, over here, you can see, you can go to the Canvas Commons and you can see ideas for other discussions that people have already created that are available for you to use. Now on here, I already have three discussions created because they were part of a template that came with my particular site. And so on here is basically a help form for students where they can ask each other questions and then get replies from themselves and also from me. And so I'm going to go ahead and click that so you can see what, you know, it looks like. And so it's very simple, right? You add the name of the discussion and then the instructions here. And so you can go ahead and click edit after you create a discussion and you can edit the title, you can edit you know, the description, you can add elements to it. So maybe you have um, this particular discussion is about help and you might insert, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the page that's called you know, front page because I have a lot of information on there that can be useful to them, right? Um, maybe you have a file, you have your syllabus as a file on your page. And so you can click that and you could add it to this page and say, before you, know, you even ask a question, check if the answer's on the syllabus, okay? So you can link it onto the instruction sheets here. Just like with pages, you can add you know, media and insert links. It's really up to you to decide what you do for the description. Okay, and so you can attach a file if you want, if you want more detailed description, descriptions than what appears in the text box. And then you have options here. Can they do thread replies or not, right? Um, do you just have to post before they see your reply? So I do this when in my literature classes, let's say I'm having them practice their analysis skills. Before they can read their classmates analysis of a certain book, they must, they must post their own. So I would have that clicked here so they can't see any examples before they do theirs. So there's not that risk of, well, if they cover the same exact ideas or very similar ideas, you know, I know it wasn't because they, they saw the post beforehand. OK, um, you can, again, enable podcast feed, make it graded. Right. Um, and then, you know, allow liking, whatever the case may be, add student to do. Is this a group discussion or not? And available, can they only do this particular discussion from a certain date to a certain date? You can do that too, or it can just be open as long as you'd like. So once you do all these various options, you click save. And now that discussion has been created and edited, right? And it's already been published as well. So when you have here, okay, you know, I'm going to click reply. And that's when a student can answer a question, right? So I have a question about X um, and then they post their reply and now they can see that, okay? And then someone can say, oh, I know the answer to that question. I'm gonna click reply. And then they say the answer is Y and they post a reply. And now that's right underneath it, okay? Um, let's go ahead and delete that. It currently has subscribe, so you, when you do that, you are notified with, about new comments, or you can uh, unsubscribe yourself so you don't get notifications there. That's up to you to, you know, choose. And so you click here, and maybe you read them all. You can mark them all as read. 
Um, you can also close for comments. So maybe you didn't do that deadline of like when it's open, but at some point you're like, you know what? I want to make sure nobody else, you know, answers this discussion. I'm going to close it for comments. And now it basically a closed board. They can still see the board, but they can't actually add anything to it. Okay. So that's just a sense of the various settings of a discussion board. Now, if you see here, pin discussions, discussions, close for comments. So on here, how do you pin a discussion? Very easily. You just click the settings under a discussion forum and you say pin. And now it's on there. Okay. Um, this element here is for reorganizing the order of the discussions. In case you want to reorganize, you can do that there as well. If you want to unpin, the same thing. You click the ellipses and then unpin. You can do other things. You can duplicate the discussion in case it's very similar from one module to the next. Again, close it for, com for comments. You can share it to the comments so others can use it. Or you can go ahead and delete it if it's no longer you know, something you want to do with your class. Okay, so there is, you know, the various settings of a discussion forum. Now, to create it, obviously, again, it's this plus sign that you click. And now you can choose, okay, you know, this discussion is for week one. And so week one, and the activity is, you know, response to reading one, whatever that reading is. You know, so you might have in your reply to this, discussion give me 500 words of your opinion on this character's relationship with this character or in this response i want you to analyze this particular scene or this particular character tell me about you know anything that confuses you about this particular thing that we had done in classwork right so whatever it is you want to do you describe the assignment here again choose your various settings so just to have something and click save Okay. And again, you can decide whether or not you want to be subscribed to this particular discussion. When you go back to the discussions, you'll see right here, right, week one, but it's not published, right, like we went over in the last tutorial. So if you want to make sure students can see it, you need to actually click and have it published to your particular Canvas site. So now it's been published there. And for example, let's go back to last week when we go to, you know, pages. And we find the one that we created. Now for this one, you want to go ahead and you click edit. And you can say, okay, the classwork, you know, you describe it there. You watch this video. You do the get to know each other activity. For homework, you know, you did that reading, that chapter. And then now I want to insert the discussion called week one right and so they can do the, the discussion before they do the assignment go ahead and click save and now it appears on that page okay and so this is again i already built this page in the last tutorial which i'll link below but in this case you can obviously edit as much as you want as the semester goes down so when students click on here they go directly to the discussion forum that you've created with instructions for them and they can just reply to, you know, as they answer the question that you've asked of them. Now, just to show you different settings, let me reply. So X and then someone else says Y and then someone sees this one and they say, oh, I have something to say about this person's Reply, Z. And as you can see, it indents here to show that it's a reply. In the settings, you can say, you know, collapse replies. I only want to see the main ones. But then here you can say, no, I want to see all the replies, including replies to various comments. And so now you see them both. So you can decide which approach you want to take here. Okay. Um, you can also check for a certain reply. Like, I want to hear what Stacy has to say about this. You can search for Stacy. Uh, maybe, you know, you want to see, okay, like, which ones have I not read yet? Click unread, and it'll only show you the ones that haven't been read. Since I created all these, it, nothing will show when I click that, right? Um, but if you haven't read some of them, that, that one can be helpful. And this is to see deleted replies. 
Now, when you look at the main page here, what are these numbers? You can see how many replies have been posted, and you'll also see how many of them you haven't read yet, okay? So that's what these two numbers signify. Right here, you have it so that you are subscribed, so you get notifications when people post. You can go ahead and unsubscribe very easily so you don't get those notifications, okay? Um, you can see when the last post was written in case that interests you. And again, you know, there's nothing too extreme here, but let's say you finish this week one and you don't want anybody else to comment. You just say close for comments. And now it's moved to that section of this page. Okay, so you can still see it, you can still read them, but no one else can reply to them. Now, I don't tend to grade discussions in, you know, specific ways, it's more participation, but if you do wanna give actual grades for it, let's go ahead and go back to what the one I just created and edit it. You can go ahead and say that it's a graded assignment. So once you have that, is it group or not, you can click that, but possible points. So maybe it's a regular 100 point system here, display graded as points or as something else. Um, what assignment group is it a part of? Is it, so in this case, is a discussion one. Are you requiring students peer review? If you choose add here, you can add specific students. So rather than assigning it to everyone, maybe these specific students have to do this discussion uh, form and other students have to do other ones. So that's what this is doing here with the ad. I'm not going to click it because you see my students' names. So when you save it, um, oh, it can't be before the course starts. Okay, so let's, let's click there. So now you see here it's a grade discussion, how many points are possible, right? And then it's added to the grade book, which I'll go over in a different tutorial. Okay, so that's if you want to actually do a specific grading system for your discussions. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit again and undo that because that's not something I would do. Something I want to briefly touch on is the group discussion. And so if you go here and you edit it and you go down to uh, this is a group discussion. You can go ahead and create different group categories if you want. So these are some examples I've created. But let's say you do a new group category and you know, you're know you talking about a certain topic. So topic X, uh, you could allow students to sign up for their own, but you can also create groups manually, right? So if you wanna just do it, that you allow them to sign up and you say, you know, we're gonna have five groups, um, and they're limited to six members. You can also assign a leader, but you know you can save that and you can have that with the self sign up. They you know create their own groups, and you click save. You can you know say you know when is it available from if you want to all this kind of information, right? But you save here, and now you see this. So as an instructor, you see all of them. But now your students can go in and they can pick what group they want to be part of for this discussion. However, from what I understand, once they're put into a, a group in the discussion, they can't actually read each group's replies. So you can have them, like for homework, you know, read all of the discussions for this particular prompt from each group, each group, and then reply to the main discussion form with your main takeaway. Because from what I can see, they won't be able to read each other's post from a separate group. Just so you know, when you create those groups in the discussion form, if you do want to do it that way, um, you're going to go ahead and go to people here. And that's where you can manually enter different students into the groups that you've created. So you'll click the group name that you just did. And then you'll see here the various topics by, you know, the various groups by, for that topic. And then on the right here, you'll just click, there's a little plus sign next to each student's name and you'll click it and you'll say which group you wanna add them to. And so that's how you do that manually, uh, just so you know. You can also click, you know, the edit and you have them randomly assign students into these groups if you wanna do it that way. Um, or you can edit here and say, you know, um, whether or not you're gonna automatically assign a group leader and that kind of stuff here, right? Um, so there is that editing that you can do, 
but here's where you go in order to pick who goes into which group. And you can also add new group sets here on this page as well. So to me, I wouldn't use this particular tool because I want them to be able to see what everybody is writing. So if I has to mean that, you know, they're brainstorming or whatever, you know, in small groups, I would use either breakout rooms on Zoom or, you know, Google Docs for that kind of purpose if they want to be private for some reason. And then they can just have their takeaways into a, a regular group discussion in this forum. So I, I wouldn't use this tool in particular, but I did want you at least to know that it exists, um, if you don't mind, that you can't actually read each group's uh, discussion, or at least students can't do so from what I'm understanding when reading through the Canvas you know, guide. So it is an option to separate them into groups, but personally what I would do instead, I'd go ahead and get rid of this. Right, and so I might say here, as a reply, okay, you know, group one, discuss this about this. Reply to this specific post. And maybe if you don't know, if you know, you have an assigned group one yet, you can add in the students' names too, or if your group, if your students know who's in group one, then you don't have to bother with that. Right, so you can post that and now it's here. And so the group one can reply to this particular post in the discussion. And so you can create a post like this for each of the different groups. So this way, all students could read what each group has to say. It's not hidden from, from them. So I would prefer you know, this you know, style of doing group discussion within one particular forum. Uh, you could also, of course, create individual forums for each group. So this could be called you know, week one reading response, group one, and then you can create another discussion that's week one, reading response group two, and so on and so forth. So that's another option here. But, you know, so I just wanted to point that out. I'm not a big fan of that element of the discussion tool. Keep in mind that while these are text-based responses, when you do a reply, you can also have them embed a link to maybe a video they created, or a, you know, they can have them insert an infographic that they created in response, you know, so it can be multimedia. Um, if you want, you can just use Flipgrid, which is a video discussion free tool, and I have a tutorial that I'll link below for that, but that's obviously outside of the LMS. So it's an option, but if not, you can have them create videos using Loom or have them upload, upload them to YouTube, and then they can go ahead and paste them into the LMS site. If you're interested in ideas for online class discussion designs, I'll go ahead and link that to the end card that's coming up in a second. Uh, but my next video tutorial for Canvas will be about the assignments tab. So if you want to make sure to watch that one, go ahead and click subscribe below. If you have any questions about what I just went over, or if you want me to make sure I create a video about a specific element of the Canvas, you know, LMS, do let me know in the comments below so I can do that in future videos. Uh, but if not, go ahead, if you haven't yet, and click that like button. I'll see you next time.